everyone, Sophia here from mygreatchallenge.blogspot.com and it's the weekend, I have a ton of projects, it's uh, 10 after 9, temperature is 51 degrees, you see how close the neighbors are, it's terrible, that's what happens when you live in the suburbs and uh, the other side is just about as close. So last weekend I painted the kitchen and the hallway, so if you didn't see it, I'll put the link below. Um, painted the whole hold on let me put on some lights no that's the fan here we go uh makes no difference oh here we go all right so i painted the whole kitchen and over here all over there painted this side here and then hello the sheath and then did the uh still has some stuff here because i'm about to paint again put the board back up um i'm not crazy about this board i think i got it at a uh, like a discount store and then this thing here pops out so I'm trying to put those push pins but it's really not um, a high quality board and then I did this side over here put my stuff back move the curtain back and uh, this is one of those um, insulated curtain and actually I have two of them so what happens is that this is not the greatest quality door it's still double pane gas filled uh, metal but when it's really, really cold outside, when the temperature, I guess, goes below freezing, which is about, oh, I don't know, maybe um, 20 days out of the year, um, you know, January, end of December, mid-January, beginning of February, the, uh, the cold, there's no draft, but you can really, really feel the cold reverberating from the door and the glass panel. So what I did is that I have a, um, you know, simple rod, and I added those um, insulated curtains that I have to actually put one of those tie backs here. And uh, I doubled them. So I have one here and one on the top of it. And they just attached like this together. So when it's really, really cold, I just close this door like this. It makes the whole place very, very dark, but that's okay. And what it does is that it really uh, cuts some of the cold so, so that's it for that and today I have to finish this section here of the staircase if you remember from the last video last weekend we closed that that portion here of the wall because that was open directly into the basement and I was getting a lot of um, leaves and dust and dog hair from the door that was going straight through the staircase onto the desk that I have behind so we closed that off I have to paint this I have to paint this section here, I have to paint the door, which I'm going to do the same color than the uh, wood here, and now the dogs are going to go crazy because we're going into the basement, yes, yes, we're going into the basement. Um, and then I have to paint the other side of the staircase in white, and finish up some of the basement. It's a mess in here. I've been working on this basement literally for almost a year. I started, I think, in January. The before was absolutely horrendous. You, you literally could not go from one side of the basement to the other because it was just a storage room. Uh, guys, calm down. Shh, calm down. So I want to make this a family room. And there's a lot of things that I want to do. Like right now you really can't see anything because it's a big mess. I have to put the desk back and get the tools out of the way. But I have two bookcases here that I'm going to use as a counter. So I've got to build a counter for that. I have this horrendous thing here that's a blanket chest. I have to get rid of it and I have to build um, a, um, a furniture entertainment center whatever you call it so I'm gonna build that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that this weekend and then we have all the books over here and all the way over there see all the books there's a lot of books and I purged the books actually there's less of them and then these are all my college books um, that I've kept for uh, my my two degrees and um, so in the old days the bookshelves were on the walls here and I've removed them when I changed the colors of the basement so this was like an orange color you'll see that when I uh, uh, upload the uh, before and after video but anyway so these were orange and then this was yellow and then the guy who lived here before we bought the house had painted that in yellow as well so I changed that to gray and white and um, there's this section here that also needs to be cleaned 
Um, this white chair here needs to go up in the guest bedroom and over there's the laundry and then that's the boiler room with slash tool shed and then there's two big closets there one of them has the uh, oil tank so because our heat is uh, oil which is quite costly so I'm thinking not this winter obviously but maybe by next year use some tax money to have us converted to gas heat because um, a it smells like oil in the bas basement when the uh, furnace goes on two the furnace is really loud and three it's cheaper of my understanding but um yeah so this part here and uh, all of this here and this over there and then if i have time since i'm going to do some white over here i have to redo the white um what do you call that in steps i don't know I have to redo the white in steps here and then I have some paint that I purchased for the purpose of the steps that's a, a dark chocolate brown so I think I'm gonna do that today because I really want to finish this area and the only way I can do those steps um, that's why I didn't care about having some white on the steps here you see that only because I knew I was gonna paint that high Electra yes I know you're a good girl yeah all right hold on um, the only reason why I didn't care about having some white over here because I knew I was going to paint that in a dark chocolate brown. So since Scott is at work this weekend, what I'm probably going to do is paint every other step first so that I can go up and down and then um, do two coats of that. And tomorrow I'll probably do two coats on the steps I didn't do. So I'll have to figure out a way to remember which ones I did. I'd probably put post-its on the ones that are dry so that I know where to step. But yeah, let me get started. I don't know if I have enough paint. I think I have only maybe a little bit over a pint left. And then this weekend, tomorrow I have, um, tomorrow I'm doing some uh, makeup and um, subscription box videos. I have, there was the uh, super sale at e.l.f. Um, online that I posted on the um, Facebook page this week. Or was it last week? can't remember. It was 50% off and then there was, uh, I think, $10 off any purchase over $30. Anyway, uh, free shipping. So I got all of this stuff here for $20 and I want to do a uh, review on it. And it's mostly mineral and um, the studio line because if you buy the other lines, they're kind of cheap and... Well, it's very cheap to begin with, but the studio line is really the best one. And it's almost comparable to um, some of the high-end brands. And then I think I have an Yves Rocher box that's coming in today. So if it comes today, I'll do a video about that tomorrow. And then I got my birch box this week. So I have to do a uh, birch box. Hold on. I got my birch box um, this week. So I have to uh, open that. I didn't open it yet. I have no idea what's in there. And so I'm going to do that tomorrow as well. So yeah, plenty busy, some grocery shopping. And then let me show you something here. This is the Amaryllis. It's finally coming out. So I pulled it out, I think, a week and a half ago. You see that? It's starting to come out. So this Amaryllis, and, and you know what they are. They just come out like about um, this tall and they make like four big red flowers that are about this color. So what I do, because mom is coming for a month, and she always does over the holidays, the Christmas season. I have an Amaryllis for her in the guest bedroom. So I start forcing it around mid-November so that by the time she comes in at the beginning of December, it's about this tall already and it blooms. Woo! My kid scared me. <laughs> you scared me. Um, you startled me. Where are you going? Going downstairs. For what? Huh? Just, um, Tom, he's a... Okay. See ya. Okay. Um, so, what I do is that I, um, um, force it early on so that she gets, by the time she comes home, uh, beginning of December, it's about this high, and then it blooms right around the holidays. And I've had this one, this bulb, for, I'd say, about four years now. Because um, we've bought the house three years ago and I bought it the Christmas prior to our moving to the house. So, yeah, this, um, I'm actually buy another one this year. I don't know to put in the uh, um, dining room. Anyway, 
me finish my tea. Um, I already got my panda shirt on. That's an old shirt that Scott used to wear. I'll take you through uh, the process and, you know, with little updates here and there to see what it looks like. Okay, I have the first coat done. And I decided that I was going to paint this side too. But now I really am freaking out as to whether or not I have um, enough paint. I was really pushing hard on the uh, roll to make sure I could get as much paint out of it as possible. But that was a workout. <laughs> it was actually harder. This part here was harder than everything I did last week. No joke. Um, so I had to remove this. Um, which is kind of resting here for now because I didn't want to remove it from over there. I did put some painter's tape here to get a straight line on it because this is um, concrete and it's got bumps and things like that and it's hard to make a straight line so I do have some uh, duct tape because I didn't have painter's tape but I didn't press on it too hard only on the edges here so when I get done with the uh, second coat I'll just rip it and then I did only one coat on here this is where the um, uh, what you call it? Um, fire alarm goes. And then I'm thinking that maybe I should not have painted that in green. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. And that's the um, emergency stop box for the uh, furnace. So that's what it looks like. And then I kind of went over the edges along the stairs. Um, one, because I know I'm going to paint that, so I really don't care. And two, because we used a uh, caulk that uh, dries transparent. So when you go down the stairs and the basement is lit up, you actually see the light going through and that kind of, it's one of those little details that bothers me. Call me crazy. Um, all right, taking a coffee break, letting that um, cure, I guess that's what you call it, and uh, move on to the second coat. Hopefully I have enough. I'm gonna really, really scrape. That's all I got left. That much, I don't know if you can see. It's not a lot. I'm gonna use the walls um, for the hand brush for the edges to make sure I get as much paint as possible. But yeah, I like it. It's gonna look really good once this is painted in uh, chocolate brown. And of course, now that this is clean and painted, all I can see is all the little spots I got here and there on the ceiling. I don't want to paint that green. First of all, I don't have enough paint. And to the paint, the white paint I have is the uh, glossy finish. And I don't like that on ceilings. Um, though it would make sense because we have a tendency to hold the wall. So maybe, I don't know, got to think about it. But hey, coffee break, let it dry. And then I'm going to uh, struggle to do the second coat. I'm probably gonna have to scrape the bottom of that can, but that's all right. Um, and then move on, wash the brush, and then move on to the white on the other side. You see that? That's what I got left. You can see the bottom of the can. And I think I got just enough to use the brush and go over a few patches. So this is back on. See the uh, straight line over there? I removed the uh, tape. So I was able to do that. It doesn't look too bad. There are some areas I think where you can see a little bit of the yellow. So that's where I'm going to go with the brush and just finish that up. I got this done. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I mean, it's a basement uh, wall. So, you know, it's not that pretty. Um, yep, it's still wet. See, the problem with that wall is that it's really not straight, so the roll was kind of like getting some areas, but not others. So I really had to uh, push on the wall, and that was exhausting. But it's done. So all I got to do now, like I said, is finish those little patches here and there. And then I'm going to paint this. I got to go see in the basement if I have another brush and paint this, or stain it, rather. Oh, see? There's a little spot right there where it's still a little white. Let me see if I can do that with my left hand. There we go. Come. I'm going to spread it thin around so it doesn't make a... Uh, same thing here. Yeah, so I'm just going to finish up those little 
pieces where there's still a little bit of yellow. It doesn't look too bad with that part right here in green. I was thinking about maybe I should do it in white, but I'm afraid that if we do it in white, we're going to have a tendency when we go down the steps to just like bump into it. That would not be good. Um, all right. So, yep, that's done. So it's, uh, let me see, what time is it? It's 11.30 and I'm done with the staircase. Hmm, I have to do white on the other side and I have to stain the gate. So I think I'm going to stain the gate first because I like to do one area at a time and make sure that things are done, um, you know, in order, I guess that's what you call it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, well, it took about three, no, three hours, no, two hours. Not too bad. And now that I'm in the kitchen and I still have a little bit of green, I'm seeing a patch um, on the other side over there that I need to cover a little bit of a uh, streak of the old color that shows. So I might as well just go ahead and finish that up. And I think there's one right there too. You can't see it, I'm sure. Uh, but I do, and it bothers me. So I'm going to take care of it. So I'm done with that. And I'm about to paint, stain, whatever you call it, my gate. And again, this I built myself. Um, to stop the dogs from going to the basement, but obviously it doesn't work because <laughs> I locked them on the other side. You guys want to come in? Come on. Come on. It opens the other way. Come on. Don't get stuck. There we go. There we go. What happened is that for a while the basement was a uh, complete mess and this one would go snoop around in the cat litter and that one that disappeared would go and do all sorts of mischievous things. So I tried to control the traffic of the dog. So I'm using the Mean Wax Wood Finish in Gun Stock. Um, and that's something that I used already for the countertop that I built in my um, kitchen. And I have a blog post on that, not a video blog post. You can see that down below. And it's this thing right here that I built and stained to kind of like add a counter space but also um, somewhat manage the dog crates a little bit better because otherwise we just had crates and baskets and it looked terrible so I built this and stained it and I'm going to use the exact same stain which is a little bit more red than the crown molding in this area but that's all right I can deal with that so I'm going to go ahead and start painting um, the gate wow look at this just one coat I did the front, I did the back, I can't see it, I did the uh, sides, the spine, the spine on this side, and the underside, all the way under, because when you open the gate from the staircase, you get to see that, so, and then because the color was a little bit redder than this, with the rest of the stain that I had on my brush, I just went over and quickly blended it over, um, I got some on the uh, alarm here. It's gone. No, wait. Darn. Okay. So <clears throat> I just went over and quickly blended um, the two together so that there's no, um, you know, real contrast between the two colors. And then I blended it a little bit over there too. So it just, you really can't see um, that they're two different colors. And when I close, this one right here in the kitchen looks like this. Hold on, let me turn on the light. So we go from this to this, and it's almost the same color. It looks really, really neat. I almost wish I had the um, wooden door. Mm, yeah, maybe someday. I'll get a nice wooden door. And I can't put a, a glass door, a storm door behind this because there's uh, little steps, you see them, that go from the uh, from the deck. So that's done. And this is dry, so I'm going to use the Ultra Cover Gloss Clear from Rustoline. I still have some. Um, I used it actually on the um, <clears throat> pocket door 
and on the counter in the kitchen. So I'm going to use the same brush and just go over this. I'm just going to put one coat, I think, just to give it a little bit of a sheen and protect it from stain. And after that, I guess that'll be it. I'm going to have to go to the store and get um, more brushes so I can do the uh, so that I can do the uh, white part on the other side of the staircase. Okay, that's done. I ended up putting two coats and I don't know if you can see it, it's still a little wet, but that's basically the shine it's going to have. And then I put like five coats right there on the uh, sides of it. And uh, yep, it's done. So, uh, let me see, let me turn the lights on again. Okay, so what needs to be done now? Uh, I gotta get brushes and I gotta paint the other side of that wall right here. And I think I still have some gray, so I'm gonna see if I can do the inside of the. Uh, hold on. Let me go downstairs and show you. Oh, and I also put a quick coat of um, the gloss on the banister just to uh, rejuvenate it a little bit. Okay, so over here, I have to do this now. I have to paint this. Um, I think I have some gray left and I hope so because we did some uh, big mess last weekend. So I need to redo the gray here and I was thinking that maybe I could do this part here in gray and keep that in white. I uh, still have to paint it white but it looks like it's going to be more work than it's worth but I don't know. What do you think? Just white? Mm, I don't know. Got to think about that. So yep, I'm going to take a big break and um, get the brushes at the Home Depot and I still have to do the white here but that's going to get done once I have the brushes. Okay, so I'm back in the basement. I just had a uh, quick lunch with the kids who went to Burger King. Um, had a salad. Um, I hate Burger King, but anyway, that makes them happy. So that's what you gotta do. Um, I'm in the, uh, so like I said, I'm in the basement. I'm about to paint this. And at lunch, I was pondering over the idea as to whether or not I should do gray in between uh, the bars. And then I realized, well, if I do that, that is going to kind of look stupid because then I'll have like this white and this white and it's going to make the kind of like, um, oh, how do you want to call it, the silhouette, I guess, of the staircase. And I'm not really sure that's something that I want. So in the interest of keeping the room and making it look as deep and big as possible, I don't want to do too much contrast and uh, you know crazy painting techniques or whatever so I'm just gonna go over it in white and then once I'm done with that when I'm done with the first coat I'll work on the uh, first coat on the insteps here and then I'll move on to the second coat over here and then I have to find the gray somewhere in the uh, border room over there and uh, cover these little spots here where we made a few mistakes with um, the caulking and plaster when we installed the stairs so yep that's my project it's uh i don't even know what time it is let me see it's uh da -da -da -da, 2 40 so i'd say it's gonna take me be uh, it's gonna take me about an hour and a half to do that so here's coat number one over here and i already did the pillar and by the way i'm using a gloss uh, paint for this because we use you know this area here as a uh, holder or whatever for balance and uh, I already did the insteps and this is just one coat now the instep I realized that one of the reasons why they were getting so stained was because I had originally painted them with a flat paint so when you um, you know there's a smudge or whatever you just can't wash it so now with the coat of glossy on it, I'm expecting that I'll be able to uh, clean it properly whenever there's a little stain. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit because gloss takes a longer time than um, flat paint or even eggshell and uh, get moving with the uh, second coat. So again, I wasn't being careful with the white at all because the goal here is just to get those area. The detail work is going to come on the uh, steps themselves with the chocolate brown color. So, done. Two coats. Two coats. Uh, actually, three on the uh, steps because the wood is, you know, grainy and whatnot. And 
We got two coats over here. It's looking already much better. I'm gonna let it dry before I start the chocolate brown. And I need to go get the gray so I can clean up the mess we did on the wall over there. And once that's done, put my desk back in and then give you a good view of what it looks like once it's done. I'm liking it very, very much. I'm sorry for the noise in the background. My neighbor is blowing the leaves off his lawn. In case you're wondering what gray I use for the basement, this is another bear from the Home Depot and this one is Premium Plus and self-priming interior eggshell enamel and this one is in gentle rain and I already patched whatever it is that I needed to patch I think I have a couple of uh, um, spots on the wall over there like dirt whatever I just covered that it's beautiful gray it's very bright it has a little tiny 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 hint of purple and it's some grays can have a, a little bit of yellow or brown this one is just slightly, really, really slightly uh, purplish. It's absolutely gorgeous and uh, it looks really, really good as a basement color. So I have uh, boards, you know, there's a uh, dry erase and then there's a cork board that I want to put back where they used to be. I know I had one nail uh, that was in here, which I replaced and it goes here, but this fell off, right? And I don't remember on which bar I had it. So in order to figure out where I need to put a new hole for a new nail, this is what I'm doing. Putting a little bit of toothpaste right here where the hole is, right? And then I'm gonna push that against the uh, bar and wherever the toothpaste goes is where I put a nail. And that would be right here. I don't know if you can see it. Right here. I have a little tab of toothpaste. That's exactly where I'm going to put the nail. So let's see how this works. It would work better if I had colored toothpaste. But hey, oh, what do I have here? I have uh, Harman Harmer Complete Care and it's transparent. So mm, I'll do my best. And here's one board. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the other one. I know I had one nail hole right here so I gotta figure out where the other one goes it's somewhere around this area because I know they were just like right next to each other okay here we go desk is back in I have my two boards side by side exactly the way it used to be except that now this is completely closed off and I don't have any more dirt and dust and dog's hair falling on my desk and uh, if you're wondering how I made this I have a, a blog post dedicated to this particular dresser that I found on the street and completely remodel. The link will be below. I only did a blog post for it. I don't have a blog, but I use Mod Podge to uh, completely um, line the drawers. So every drawer is lined, as you can see in pink, and then I lined the top as well with some um, foil. And I think this was foil wrap paper from uh, the store domain. And I use Mod Podge to do that. And the middle drawer is the same thing. Um, so I keep all matter of, you know, notebook and uh, little pads and things like that. And uh, yeah, so that's done. And then I just realized that it's just way too dark for me to work on the chocolate brown for the steps. So I'm just going to stop for the day and uh, pick up where I left off tomorrow and uh, that will be it so I guess I'll see you uh, in the next video